feels like my throat is closing in and it feels like I'm breathing out of a straw. You know, one instance you don't have your inhaler with you, um, you know, you don't know what can happen. It's the number one cause of emergency department visits uh, amongst children in the United States. It causes more school illnesses than any other chronic illness uh, in the United States. It is asthma. <laughs> More than 20 million Americans have asthma. Although it is usually diagnosed in childhood, it's a condition that can strike anyone at any age. It's like you inhale, and it's almost as if you're underwater. It's like you inhale and nothing goes in. Brianna knows all about asthma. She's had it since she was three years old. But as she got older, she didn't always want to deal with her condition. Asthma growing up for me was tough. Uh, my mom was very religious about me taking my medication. Um, I remember numerous times where um, I just didn't want to take it, you know, because I, I felt that if I was taking my asthma medication, then I was weak, that I wasn't, you know, as good as other people, and it just was a hassle for me, and a lot of times I would purposely forget about it. While she excelled at many things, she saw herself as the girl with asthma. Some children are self-conscious about using their inhaler in school. They're self-conscious about having their peers see them with trouble breathing. They want to fit in with, with everyone around them. They want to fit in with the other uh, kids who are their age. Um, and that means that they may not try to um, uh, call attention to themselves when they actually do need to seek medical attention, when they actually do need to reach for an inhaler. It was hard. It was hard because no one else seemed to have it at the time. But in reality, more than one out of 10 Americans under age 18 has been diagnosed with asthma. How do teens with asthma stay healthy? How important are asthma medications and knowing how to use them properly? Those are questions Brianna eventually had to face. Having an asthma attack is probably the most scary thing you could ever imagine. Why do you think some teens resist taking their asthma medication? Asthma is a very serious illness. Uh, it can come on at a moment's notice when you're not expecting it. It can strike in the middle of the night it feels as if you're being choked. What is asthma? The medical definition is a chronic inflammatory disorder involving constriction of the muscles lining the bronchial airways. What really happens during an asthma attack? First, there is swelling that narrows the lining of the airways. Then the muscles around the bronchial tubes tighten, causing the airways to constrict even more. Finally, Thick mucus is produced within the bronchial tubes, which results in coughing and slows the passage of air even further. Symptoms of asthma are cough, wheezing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. And in many people, they never wheeze, they just cough. And so many people don't know they have asthma because the only symptom is cough. So knowing the symptoms and seeking medical help to find out if you have asthma is the first step. This is particularly important because if asthma goes untreated, it can cause permanent damage to the lungs. You can allow the lungs to become fixed or scarred such that they never return uh, to their normal state. But by early treatment, we can prevent that from happening. Alexandria had asthma symptoms for years and didn't know it. They showed up most often when she played basketball. It was the allergies that originally made me go to the doctor, but then when I mentioned the uh, symptoms, he diagnosed me with asthma as well. We thought it was just her exerting herself and not being able to, to breathe, so we just said, you know, sit down and calm down and, and it, it would go away. Doctors say getting the proper treatment for asthma is a crucial part of living with it. There are even cases of fatal asthma in children because their disease hasn't been adequately treated. It truly affects the quality of the life that they live. After being diagnosed, Alexandria is back out on the court, hopeful that with her treatment carefully monitored, her quality of life will improve. Hopefully I won't get any of the symptoms anymore so I'll be able to play longer and um, better because I can breathe better. 
Alexandria only recently started taking asthma medicine. Other teens have been on medication for years. I can handle it and just, you know, take my medicine and then it gets better. Jack says at this point, taking the medicine is just an everyday part of life. He says it's because he listened to his doctor and followed the doctor's instructions right after he was diagnosed. Because I have such a routine, um, you know, it's such a, it's a daily part of my life. I, I, you know, I don't think about it at all. It's just like brushing my teeth or, you know, taking a shower or something. It, it, uh, it's just a part of my life. He, you know, he's, he was a responsible kid and I haven't really monitor, monitored him taking his medicine for a long time. Asthma is treated with daily medication in the form of inhalers and pills to help prevent asthma attacks. Many of these medications act to reduce the swelling and mucus production in the airways. Inhalers that may contain bronchodilators, medicine to relax the muscles, are used during emergency flare-ups. The number of teens with asthma is much higher than it was a few decades ago. One reason could be the air they are breathing. Not only can poor air quality actually exacerbate or make worse asthma, but it also has a capability of inducing new asthma in children. It smells like old gas. It just smells like old tar, you know how they make tar on the road work and something like that? Yeah, it really stinks very bad. It doesn't just smell bad. Several studies show bus fumes can also cause flare-ups in people who have asthma. So can other pollutants in the air. Brad lives in a city with high levels of ozone and pollution, but he likes being outdoors and playing sports. Tennis, basketball, baseball, soccer, uh, and done some swimming, and a little bit of track. The combination of polluted air and exercise frequently triggers an asthma attack. We're dealing with a situation where there is an irritant that's being moved in and out of the lungs at a, a more rapid rate because of the amount of exercise that those individuals are doing. I mean, you're restricted and you have no control over it and you're breathing heavy and you don't really have a choice. And I mean, it's just lack of control and that's the scariest part. So if Brad wants to keep his asthma under control and stay healthy enough to maintain his activities, he has to do more than just take his medicine he has to modify his behavior. He uses the weather report to check the day's ozone level. And when it's high, he slows down or sits out. You do have to be aware and actually just kind of take it easy for the day. An asthma attack also can be triggered by certain indoor conditions. Inhaling mold spores has been linked to both bringing on an attack as well as causing asthma in people who didn't have it before. People with asthma have one more thing, one more substance that they need to be conscious of in the indoor and outdoor environment. If you have asthma, take a walk around the house. Look in the usual places. If you don't have a fan in your bathroom, you really need to put one in. Regular checkups also are important for people with asthma. Doctors need to monitor the condition in case treatment needs to be changed. They want to make sure patients stay in control of their asthma and stay prepared for any changes. A severe flare-up can happen at any time. It is not to be taken lightly uh, and um, it's important to know that we have very safe medicines and very safe asthma plans. Blow it out hard, Katrina. Squeeze. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. We can't do any more. Take that deep breath back in and relax. All of these young people have asthma and are learning to deal with it. The medications, the breathing treatments, the good days, and the bad. But what about their future? Will their asthma keep them from doing things they enjoy? Will it keep them from living full, active lives? Brianna knows the answer is no. It, it never stopped me from doing anything. You know, I always participating in whatever I wanted to. I played basketball, I played soccer, I ran track, I played softball, I played 
three, at least three, sometimes four sports. Brianna is proof that asthma doesn't need to hold you back. She's had asthma almost her whole life, but still triumphed as a member of the U.S. women's soccer team, bringing home a gold medal and a World Cup championship. She went to the emergency room a few times in her early teens because she wasn't taking her medication. She got better about taking it after that, but gradually slacked off. And then? I went like a couple weeks and didn't really use my inhaler a lot, felt okay. Had a really strenuous session at training one night in March and was jogging and running and usually my asthma is gradual. It comes on me and then I can feel it coming on me. I can take my, my acute inhaler and then I'm fine. Well, this time I was fine and all of a sudden, bam, it was there. And my, it was like the door closed on my throat. You could hear me breathing across the stadium field, like trying to get an air and like, <gasps> like that. I mean, it was just really loud and intense. My eyes, I guess, started to get yellow and my teammates were freaking out. And uh, I ended up in the emergency room that night, got a, um, a treatment um, and was there for a good three or four hours. And then that's when I realized that I have to get this under control. And then a few weeks later, I ended up with seven different medications. Some of the medications were for allergies, one of the main triggers for Brianna's asthma. Someone who had had their asthma forever, um, didn't really have any shame in it, but just wasn't aware of that. I needed to take medication religiously every day until last year. And it's very important. You know, you don't ever want to get in a situation where you're, you're losing your breath so badly that you think you might die. Brianna knows asthma medications can cause side effects like stomach upset, sleeplessness, irritability, and increased cough. She also knows if used correctly, serious complications are rare. I don't feel the twinge anymore, and that has freed me up to do so many things, and, and I can go wherever I want to go. I don't have to worry. And she has a message for any teen who may feel awkward using an inhaler. And there's no shame. I mean, I took my asthma inhaler in the middle of a World Cup game with the TV camera right in my face, and I had no shame in taking my inhaler in front of 90,000 people with 40 million people watching because what was important for me was not being embarrassed, it was being ready. How would you convince a friend to take better care of his or her asthma?